Okay, this is an example problem for Physics uh, 1607, Auburn University, Fall 2013. This is an uh, end of chapter problem from chapter 8. And this is a ballistic pendulum problem. It's, this is a classic example of collisions, momentum, uh, things of that nature. That you, you'll see this again. Uh, I can promise you that. So the idea is there's a rifle bullet that's being fired. This is some given M1, and it's got some given velocity V1. And it's being fired at a pendulum. This is this mass M2, which is being suspended uh, by, from some uh, cord with uh, a given length L. And the idea is when the bullet strikes the pendulum, it embeds itself within it, and of course the pendulum starts to swing. And the question asks, um, uh, if in, for part A, it, it asks for you to calculate the vertical height through which the pendulum rises. In other words, if this is the the initial level, the final position of the pendulum will be, you know, the final vertical position will be at some height, h. And it, part B asks the initial kinetic energy of the bullet, and part C, the kinetic energy of the bullet and the pendulum immediately after the bullet becomes embedded in the pendulum. So I'm not going to solve these in order, because I think part A is easier to solve if you solve it last. So let's go like this. Part B asks for uh, initial kinetic energy of the bullet. can't write with a stylus. Okay, this is really easy. You have, um, just from the definition of kinetic energy, we're given uh, the mass of the bullet, and we're given the velocity, initial velocity of the bullet, so plugging in our values, this just becomes 1 half m1 v1 squared, and you can plug in numbers and get an answer. No big deal. So for part C, I'll box this up. Uh, part C asks for the kinetic energy of the bullet and the pendulum immediately after the bullet becomes embedded in the pendulum. And this is a little bit more subtle. Because to get the kinetic energy of the system here, we're going to need the, the velocity of the uh, pendulum and bullet system together. And to do that, um, we can go to the, sorry, this is part C. We're going to solve for the velocity using um, conservation of momentum. So we're being asked for kinetic energy, but we're going to have to go a step before that and use uh, conservation of momentum to find the velocity. Conservation of momentum simply says total momentum before is equal to, I should put this, total before. I'll just make that a 1 is equal to the total after, I'll say total 2. And in general, these are vectors. I'm going to be dealing with magnitudes, which just so you know, momentum is a vector. So if, if I uh, unpack that, let's go back to our picture and see what we have. Total momentum beforehand, we're looking in this area right here. Well, we've got two masses. We've got mass 1, which is moving with the velocity v1. We've got mass 2, which is not moving with any velocity, so just from the definition of momentum, mv, if v equals 0, then clearly the momentum equals 0. So I can say now m1, v1, this is the, my bullet's momentum, uh, plus 0, this is the momentum of the, of the pendulum before the collision, equals m1, v2, plus m2, v2, where this term is the momentum of the bullet afterwards, and this term is the momentum of the pendulum afterwards. And of course, because they're sticking together, we have an inelastic collision, and we're going to require their velocities to be equal, which is why I've uh, subscripted both of these, uh, I keep saying velocity, I should be saying speed, it's why I've subscripted these speeds with a 2, because it's the same speed. So, of course, I can factor that out, and I'm going to write it like this, big M v2. And over here, I've defined big M here as just the summation of, of uh, the mass of the bullet and the mass of the pendulum. It's just a convention that I like to do. It helps me keep uh, keep my, my term straight. I invite you to use it if you want to. If not, don't worry about it. 
Okay, so, um, at this point it becomes really easy to find V2, which is what we're looking for. It's just M1 V1, total momentum of the system before the collision, divided by the mass uh, of the bullet and the block combined. So, this means that the kinetic energy after the collision of the block and bullet combined is just one half big M V2 squared. Of course you can unpack the big M as M1 plus M2 if you want to. But I like leaving it like this. It's cleaner. And we have numbers for all this stuff. We can just plug it in. Uh, no big deal. Okay, so, well, maybe it would be instructive to actually show you what this reduces to. Um, if I plug in this number for, for V2, I've got M1 squared V1 squared over big M squared. Um, actually, let me, let me go to a different page here. So, I've got kinetic energy equal to one half big M V2 squared. Plugging in the values I have for V2, this is oh, this is one half big M, and what was V2 again? It was M1 V1 over big M, so I've got M1 squared V1 squared over big M squared. So one of my big M's is going to go away, and I come up with one half M1 V1 squared over big M. And there I plug in numbers, I get an answer, and everything's happy. Um, so now I've answered parts B and C. Let's go back and answer part A. Now part A, if you remember, asks, let me go back to the original picture. Part A asks about this height H. In other words, this pendulum is going to swing once the bullet hits it. And it's asking um, vertically, how high is this thing going to go? We're not worried about how far over it goes. We're just worried about vertically how high does it get. Well, the easy way to solve that is with conservation of energy. Now, you got to be careful here. Notice there's no friction. There is going to be a tension in this string here. But if you notice, it's always perpendicular to the velocity of this pendulum. In other words, it's not going to do any work on the pendulum because a uh, force that's orthogonal uh, to a displacement um, does no work. And I said orthogonal to the velocity it is. It's also orthogonal to the displacement. This thing's going to move in a circle. Uh, the tension is always, is everywhere perpendicular to a tangent to that circle. So the work done by that force is going to be zero. So we can use con conservation of energy here pretty well, and, or extremely well. So I can, I can just do that part C. I've got um, potential energy before plus kinetic energy before equals potential energy after plus kinetic energy after. And just so you know where I'm starting and stopping my system, I'm basically looking at the system the instant after the bullet hits. So he, basically here, before the pendulum starts to swing, I'm going to set my potential energy equal to zero. So don't let the ones and twos confuse you. This is All these ones and twos are after the bullet hits the pendulum. So my potential energy at first is zero because I'm, I'm sitting there at my zero point. Uh, my kinetic energy is... Kinetic energy is just one half m one v one squared. The kinetic energy of the bullet equals potential energy two. Follow me here. This is going to be big M G H. The masses together uh, times G H. No big deal. And of course, I'm looking at the extent of the motion. The velocity there or the speed there is zero. And so this kinetic energy term here is going to go to zero. So I come up with pretty simply that H is just M1 V1 squared over 2 big M G. Alrighty, that's that.